Heavenly Father, we come to you on this Sabbath day, Lord, um, and there's so many people in the world that are hurting, and Lord, we think of uh, Sharon's mom, we ask that you comfort and be with her, uh, we think of uh, Connie at this time, and Lord, ask that you would intervene on her behalf, we think of the family who uh, last night lost a child in a fire here locally, we think of Paul, Lord, and the issues with his breathing, and we ask, Lord, that uh, if it be your will, that you would recover him and put him back on his feet. And now, Lord, as we uh, talk about this subject, I just pray that you'd forgive me of my sins and cleanse me from all unrighteousness. And Lord, open our heart and mind to examine carefully the things that I'll be sharing. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. Oh, Bill. Oh. Oh, because, yeah, that didn't make sense, right? I mean, sorry. Okay, so, um, uh, <clears throat> this topic is something that uh, I started thinking about somewhere in the neighborhood of about six, maybe eight months ago. And I got a call from my aunt and she told me that my cousin was working at Loma Linda and um, uh, in a very high position there and and so uh, I've never met this cousin of mine but um, but anyway it got me thinking for some reason about Loma Linda and um, it just sort of built from there and I just you know never really uh, thought much about Loma Linda until then and I just started reading about Loma Linda and what's going on and, and I just felt convicted to put this presentation together because of uh, some evidence as I see that something tragic uh, may be soon to def befall Loma Linda. So uh, let's get started here. Um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to talk about a series of quotes here. We're going to, this presentation is going to be heavy on the Ellen White quotes. Um, and we're going to lay out some principles here uh, for our work uh, on behalf of uh, people in, in the medical industry. So let's get started. God desires his children to find delight in the works of his hands, to locate our sanitarians sanitariums amidst the scenes of nature would be to follow God's plan. And the more closely this plan is followed, the more wonderfully will he work to restore suffering humanity. For our educational and medical institutions, places should be chosen where? Away from the dark clouds of sin that hang over the great cities the Son of Righteousness can arise with healing in His wings. So the principle from the very beginning of our work in our medical institutions was to locate these institutions away from the cities. Now, the prophet here says that the more closely this plan is followed, the more wonderfully will he work to restore suffering humanity. So this is a... a um, a condition that's put in place for the Lord to work in a mighty way for us. Moving on. Let the leaders in our institutions, excuse me, let the leaders in our work instruct the people that sanitariums should be established in the midst of the most pleasant surroundings, in places not disturbed by the turmoil of the city. Places whereby wise instruction, the thoughts of the patients, can be bound up with the thoughts of God. Again and again I have described such places. In other words, she's repeating this again and again. But it seems that there has been no ear to hear. Recently, in a most clear and convincing manner, the advantage of establishing, establishing our institutions 
especially our sanitariums and schools, outside the cities was presented to me. So she's been saying this again and again, but it seems like the message is falling on deaf, deaf ears. Why are our physicians so eager to be located in the cities? The very atmosphere of the cities is polluted. In them, patients who have unnatural appetites to overcome cannot be properly guided. The patients, guarded, thank you. The patients who are victims of strong drink, the saloons of a city are a continual temptation. To place our sanitariums where they are surrounded by ungodliness is to counterwork the efforts made to restore the patients to health. These are powerful quotes. So what you have here is that not only are our, our, our medical institutions, but our schools to be away from these cities. And you're counteracting the work that God would have done. By the way, this right here is a screenshot taken on 9-15-2018. Where do you think it was taken at? Loma Linda. Huh? Well, it's uncrowded right there, but it's, uh, what is it, four or five lanes on each side. I mean, you don't have that unless you have high population density. Uh, where do you think this is? Where do you think this image is? Well, let me scroll in on it. What is that called right there? Loma Linda. Loma Linda. That's right. In the future, the condition of things in the cities will grow more and more objectionable, and the influence of city surroundings will be acknowledged as unfavorable to the accomplishment of the work that our sanitarium should do. So here you have this super high density area, and uh, we have a major, major medical institution located there. Let's go on. From the standpoint of health, the smoke and dust of the cities are very objectionable. And the patients who for a large part of their time are shut up within four walls often feel they are prisoners in their rooms. When they look out a window, they see nothing but houses, houses, houses. Those who are thus confined to their rooms are liable to brood over their sufferings and sorrow. Sometimes an invalid, invalid is poisoned by his own breath. Mm -hmm. Do you know what this is right here? That's the new building going up at Loma Linda. And when you look there, all you see is what? Houses, houses, houses. She goes on to say, and by the way, this, all these quotes are in councils, to health, councils on Health. Many other evi evils follow the establishment of great medical institutions in the large cities. Why deprive patients of health-restoring blessing to be found in the outdoor? I have been instructed that as the sick are encouraged to leave their rooms, and spend time in the open air cultivating flowers or doing some other light, pleasant work, their minds will be called from self to something more health-giving. Exercise in the open air should be prescribed as a beneficial, life-giving what? Necessity. Do you see the building being designed in such a way that people can get access to the outside? Absolutely not. And yet Ellen White says it's a what? Necessity. A necessity for health. Here's one of the sanitariums right here in the old days. And the rooms went where? Right out onto the patio, right out onto the porch. The longer patients can be kept out of doors, the less care they will require. The more cheerful their surroundings, the more hopeful will they be. Surround them with beautiful things of nature. 
Place them where they can see the flowers growing and hear the birds singing. And their hearts will break into song and harmony with the song of birds, of the birds. Shut them in rooms and be these rooms ever so elegantly furnished, they will grow fretful and gloomy. Give them the blessing of outdoor life. Thus their souls will be uplifted. Relief will come to body and mind. And might I add that those that are visiting these patients will also gain a blessing. Amen? Out of the cities is my message. Our physicians ought to have been wide awake on this point long ago. I hope and pray and believe that they will now arouse to the importance of getting out into the country. The time is near when the large cities will be visited by judgments of God. In a little while, these cities will be terribly shaken. And this is a picture of San Francisco after its uh, earthquake. No matter how large, listen to this, no matter how large or how strong their buildings, no matter how many safeguards against fire may have been provided, let God touch these buildings and in a few minutes or a few hours they are in ruins. So what does she say? No matter how strong, no matter how many safeguards, it's not going to save them, right? The ungodly cities of our world are to be swept away by the bosom of destruction and calamities that are now befalling immense buildings and large portions of cities. God is showing us what will come upon the whole earth. He has told us, now learn a parable of the fig tree. When his branch is yet tender and putteth forth leaves, ye know that summer is nigh. So likewise ye, when ye shall see all these things, know that it, the coming of the Son of Man, is near, even at the doors. Matthew 24, 32, and 33. This is from Testimony of the Church, Volume 7. It might seem to us that it would be best to select for our sanitariums among places, excuse me, sanitarium places among the wealthy that this would give character to our work and secure patronage for our institutions. But in this there is no light. The Lord seeth not as man seeth, 1 Samuel 16, 7. Man looks at the outward appearance, but God looks at the heart. The fewer grand buildings, the what? Fewer. The fewer grand buildings there are around our institutions, the less vexation we shall experience. Many of the wealthy property owners are irreligious and irreverent. Worldly thoughts fill their minds. Worldly amusement, merriment, and hilarity occupy their time. Extravag extravagance in dress and luxurious living absorb their means. The heavenly messengers are not welcome to their homes. They want God afar off. So I did a little study here. Is there any valuable property in that area? Is it, can I get a, any witnesses that have been down there? So I looked at the medium home price in Loma Linda. That means the average home price. It's $422,400, which is about almost, almost $300,000 above the average median home price in the United States. So it's a kind of a wealthy area. Notice what she says. The fewer grand buildings there are around our institutions, the less vexation we shall experience. If you go online, you can watch about how those that are building these buildings right here, these grand structures, uh, they're really excited about how they're going to arrest the attention of the people. And yet, the prophet says otherwise. It will arrest the tension of the people, but for the negative. 
Do we not desire to see our fellow beings freed from disease and infirmity and in the enjoyment of health and strength? Then let us be as true to principle as the needle to the pole. So Ellen White is saying that if you are not following these principles, you really don't want to see them free from disease. So why are they building these structures? If we are to go to the expense of building sanitariums in order that we may work for the salvation of the sick and afflicted, we must plan our work in such a way that those who desire to help will receive the help they need. We are to do all in our power for the healing of the body, but we are to make the healing of the soul of far greater importance. Those who come to our sanitariums as patients are to be shown the way of salvation, that they may repent and hear the words, Thy sins are forgiven thee, go in peace and sin no more. Do you understand what this is saying? As important as it is to heal the body, what's more important? The soul. Is this kind of work being done? Is the right arm attached to the body? Our sanitariums are to be established for what? One object. The advancement of present truth. Are, is the present truth being shared in our medical institutions? I'm not saying it isn't. I haven't seen it in a major scale. The advancement of present truth, that's what our institutions are there for. And they are to be so conducted that a decided impression in favor of the truth will be made on the minds of those who come to them for treatment. The conduct of the workers from the head manager to the worker occupying the humblest position is to tell on the side of truth. The institution is to be pervaded by a spiritual atmosphere. We have a warning message to bear to the world and our earnestness, our devotion to God's service is to impress those who come to our sanitariums. We are living in the very close of this earth's history and we are to move cautiously, understanding what the will of the Lord is and imbued with His Spirit, doing work that will mean much to His cause work that will proclaim the warning message to a world infatuated, deceived, and perishing in sin. Now, I have these two quotes right here. One is from the Daily Edition. Uh, the other one is from Councils of, on Health. We must also remember that our work is to correspond with our faith. We believe that the Lord is soon to come. And should, we not our, and should not our faith be represented in buildings we erect? Shall we put a large outlay of money into a building that will soon be consumed in the great conflagration? That's a question. This is what the newspaper says. Following a string of development projects in the Inland Empire, Loma Linda University Health is about to launch its most expensive and extensive project to date. The health system is planning a $1.2 billion expansion on its main medical campus in Loma Linda. You know, I hear $1.2 billion, but let's look at one, what $1.2 billion is. I want you to just let this sink in. The $1.2 billion expansion project in Loma Linda is $1,200 million. Uh, and I have a question. Does that have anything to do with a large outlay of money that the prophet tells us not to put into buildings? She goes on. Our money means souls. Did you hear that? Our money means souls. And it is to be used to bring a knowledge of the truth to those who, because of sin, are under the condemnation of God. 
Then let us bind about our ambitious plans. Let us guard against us extravagance or improvidence, lest the Lord's treasury, treasury become empty and the builders not have means to do their appointed work. Much more money than was necessary has been expended on our older institutions. And Loma Linda has been around since the turn of the last century. Those who have done this have supposed that this outlay would give character to the work. But this plea is no excuse for unnecessary expenditure. Our ideas of building and fundraising our institutions are to be molded and fashioned by a true practical knowledge of what it means to walk humbly with God. Never should it be thought necessary to give an appearance of wealth. Never should appearance be depended on as means of success. This is a delusion. The desire to make an appearance that is not in every way appropriate to the work that God has given us to do, an appearance that could be kept up only by expending a large sum of money, is a merciless tyrant. It is like a canker that is ever eating into the vitals. Uh, this is from uh, uh, a press release here. And this is what it says. Construction workers walk around rows of pedestals for the earthquake protection system for the new Loma Linda University Medical Center in Loma Linda on Tuesday, August 29, 2017. If you want to get a better look at these, this is the latest earthquake proof system. We'll read about this. These are special seismic pedestals. This is from uh, the uh, San Bernardino Sun. Thank you. New Loma Linda Hospital designed to move up and down during an earthquake. Loma Linda. The new Loma Linda University Medical Center will be the first in the country engineered to bob up and down during an earthquake. Construction engineers said recently, while hospitals in California have built to accommodate horizontal movement for decades, the 1.4 billion redo of the adult hospital at 11234 Anderson Street in Loma Linda takes it vertical for the first time. Said Richard E. White, a principal and senior construction manager with Oakland-based JTEC HCM, a healthcare construction management company. This is his quote, this is a quote from him. This is the latest level in technology, said White. Isn't it interesting? We have one White saying one thing and another White saying another thing. Isn't that interesting? White, whose firm is managing construction and engineering for the project, when completed in 2020, the new 16-story hospital will be the tallest building in San Bernardino County and the second highest in Riverside County. Behind the Morongo Casino Resort and Spa, and I underline that because I'm going to bring this up later, in Cabazon, said Eric Schilt, and an assistant vice president of construction for Loma Linda University Medical Center. The Marango structure is 410 feet and 27 stories tall. The base of the new adult hospital will float on 126 steel structures with attached springs and specialized steel plates that allow it to rock from side to side, as well as thrust upward in the event of a powerful earthquake. White said, the structure will be able to slice 82 inches from side to side and thrust up and down 8 inches as it rides out a powerful earthquake, White said. Isn't that interesting? The earthquake protection devices are being installed in a pit 40 feet below the surface on the south side of the building and 30 feet below the surface on the north side. White said. 
The hospital will be supported entirely by these 126 structures. Pieces uh, to some of those have been signed by LLUMC staff. Now, who is that? Loma Linda University staff, medical staff, and visitors at the surface and will be lowered into the pit below. So here's what they've done, friends. They've put their signature on this. Some of the signatures will be visible to those taking tours of the new hospital's basement after the construction has been, been completed, White said. Sounds to me like a monument to man. They forgot the following statement, though. No material. Friends, this almost makes me want to cry. No material can be used in the erection of buildings that will preserve them from destruction when God's appointed time comes to send retribution on men for their disregard of his law and for their selfish ambition. There's nothing they can do, friends. When time comes, there's not a single thing they can do. Are we not to reach these cities? The cities are to be worked from outposts. Said the messenger of God, shall not the cities be warned? Yes, not by God's people living in them, but by their visiting them to warn them of what is coming upon the earth. Letter 182, 1902. But what are we supposed to do in the cities? Do you know there is something that we're not to have our institutions in the cities, we're not to have our schools in the cities, but, but we, we are to have two things in the cities. Look at this. Our restaurants must be in the cities, for otherwise the workers in these restaurants could not reach the people and teach them the principles of right living. And for the present, in other words, for the present, and I don't know when this ends, but for the present, we shall have to occupy meeting houses in the cities. But ere long, there will be such strife and confusion in the cities that those who wish to leave them will not be able. We must be preparing for these issues. This is the light that is given me. General Conference Bulletin, April 6, 1903. What are we to have in the cities? Yes, and we need to, instead of building these big institutions and stuff like that, we should put 40 restaurants in Los Angeles with the 1.2 billion. What do we do with Loma Linda? We move. We move it. I don't know that that's going to happen, that we're going to move it. I don't know. But I'm not even sure that building's going to be finished, friends. It's best to be finished in 2020. Where do I get this evidence that we need to move? Because I know the argument could be, well, it's already there, it's already built, it's already doing something in the community. Friends, Ellen White says the work it's doing is counteracting the work of God. Look at this quote. Special light has been given me in regard to moving our publishing houses and sanitariums and what? Schools out of the cities into places more favorable for their work where those connected with them will not be exposed to all the temptations of city life, especially should our schools be away from the cities. It is not for the spiritual good of the workers in our institutions for them to be located in the cities where the temptations of the enemy abound on every hand. You see, Loma Linda, it was built at one time in a place that was conducent for the Lord's work. But guess what happened? The city moved out to Loma Linda, right? Now look at this. Instruction has also been given that Pacific Press should be moved from Oakland. As the years have passed, the city has grown, and it is now necessary to establish the printing plant in some more rural place where land can be secured for the homes of the employees. Friends, do you want to have an institution where the houses cost $400,000 for the employees that are making $50,000 a year or $30,000 or whatever it is. You see how crazy this is? Where land can be secured.
for homes of the employees. Those who are connected with our offices of publication should not be obliged to live in the crowded cities. They should have opportunity to obtain homes where they will be able to live without requiring high what? Wages. Do you see the principles that every hand are being disregarded in this situation? So the city grew, they moved out. And that's what should have been done here. Letters, from letters received by those connected with our institutions and by movements already made, we see that many desire to obtain homes near these institutions. Now we're going to start veering away from the institution at Loma Linda, and now we're going to start addressing those that are living in proximity to this institution. Because friends, we have a work to do, and that's to go to an every nation, kindred, tongue, and people and share a message. My mind is weighed down with perplexity regarding this. But regarding what? Let me start from the beginning. From letters received by those connected with our institutions and by movements already made, we see that many desire to obtain homes near these institutions. My mind is weighed down with perplexity regarding this because I have received instruction from the Lord in regard to the influence of that would be, that would be exerted upon individuals and upon our work for our people selfishly to gather around our institutions. For years, in warning often repeated, I have testified to our people that God is, was not pleased to see families leaving the smaller churches and gathering into the places where our publishing houses, sanitariums, and schools are established for their own convenience, ease, and what? Worldly profit. Now, I have two articles here, one from Wikipedia, the other one from The Atlantic. Notice what it says. Loma Linda University Church of Seventh-day Adventists is a Seventh-day Adventist church on Loma Linda University campus in Loma Linda, California, United States. By membership, it is the largest Adventist church in the world with about 7,000 members against council. Next quote from the Atlantic. But n make no mistake, Loma Linda is that it is home to one of the largest concentrations of Seventh-day Adventists in the world. <laughs> but what does the prophet say? It is not the purpose of God that his people should colonize or settle together in large communities. The disciples of Christ are his representatives upon the earth. And God designs that they shall be scattered all over the country, in towns, cities, and villages, as light submits the darkness of the world. Testimonies for the Church, Volume 8, page 244. Not to colonize, friends. We're just going down the list here. Institutions disregarding counsel. Individuals disregarding counsel. But ere long, the prophet says, there will be such strife and confusion in the cities that those that wish to leave them will not be able. We must be preparing for these issues. General Conference Bulletin, April 6, 1903. Now we're going to get into the meat of it, friends. Ellen White, while at Loma Linda, California, April 16, 1906, there passed before me a most wonderful representation. During a vision of the night, I stood on an eminence for which I could see houses shaken like a reed in the wind. Buildings, great and small, were falling to the ground. Pleasure resorts. Did we not read that there's pleasure resorts down there? Pleasure resorts, theaters, hotels, and the homes of the wealthy were shaken and shattered. Many lives were blotted out of existence, and the air was filled with the shrieks of injured and the terrified. She says many lives were blotted out, she goes on, the destroying angels of God were at work, one touch in buildings so thoroughly constructed. And, and friends, we have the message, these buildings are the most thoroughly constructed ever. 
so thoroughly constructed that men regarded them as secure against every danger, quickly became heaps of rubbish. But the awfulness of the scenes that passed before me, I cannot find words to describe. It seemed that the forbearance of God was exhausted and that the judgment day had come. Where'd she have this vision? On April 18th, two days after the scene of falling buildings had passed before me at Loma Linda, I went to fill an appointment at the Carr Street Church, Los Angeles. As we neared the church, we heard the newsboys crying, San Francisco destroyed by an earthquake. With a heavy heart, I read the first hastily printed news of the terrible disaster. Two weeks later, on our homeward journey, we passed through San Francisco and hiring a carriage spent an hour and a half in viewing the destruction wrought in, the, in that great city. Buildings that were thought to be proof against disaster were lying in ruins. So people read this. Ellen White is in Loma Linda. She has this vision about this unbelievable earthquake. And two days later, what happens? An earthquake. So they, people say, Ellen White predicted the San Francisco earthquake. But what does Ellen White say? Review and Herald, July 5th, 1906. Since the San Francisco earthquake, many rumors have been current regarding statements I have made. Some have reported that while in Los Angeles, I claimed that I had predicted the San Francisco earthquake and fire and that, the Los, and that Los Angeles would be next city to suffer. This is not true. The morning after the earthquake, I said no more than that the earthquakes will come, the floods will come, and that the Lord's message to us is that we shall not establish ourselves in the wicked cities." Unquote. Ellen White said she didn't predict the San Francisco earthquake, but she did have a vision about an earthquake, and she had the vision in where? Loma Linda. Now I want to lay out some evidence here. Just two pieces of evidence right here. 9T, page 12, paragraph 1. On one occasion when in New York I was in the night season called upon to behold buildings rising story after story. Where was she when she had the vision of falling buildings in New York? She was in New York, amen? Now let's look at the next one. When I was at Nashville, I had been speaking to the people. Where was she at? And in the night season, there was an immense ball of fire that came right from heaven and settled in Nashville. And there were flames going out like arrows from that ball, and houses were being consumed, houses were tottering and falling. So she has these visions, one where? New York. And the other where? Yeah. Nashville. And where does the destruction take place? <laughs> now, friends, what I'm suggesting is this, that when she has these cataclysmic event dreams, that where she has the dream is where the event takes place. Mrs. White goes on when she's talking about her vision there that she had at Loma Linda. She says this, through his prophet Zephaniah, the Lord specifies the judgments that he will bring upon evildoers. I will utterly consume all things from off the land, saith the Lord. I will consume man and beast. I will consume the fowls of the heaven, the fishes of the sea, the stumbling blocks, <clears throat> and the stumbling blocks with the wicked, and will cut off man from off the land, saith the Lord. And it shall come to pass in that day of the Lord's sacrifice that I will punish the princes and the king's children and all such are clothed with strange apparel. In the same day also will I punish all those that leap on the threshold which fill their master's houses with violent and deceit. And it shall come to pass at that time that I will search Jerusalem with candles and punish the men that are settled on their lees that say in their heart, the Lord will not do good, neither will he do evil. Therefore their goods shall become a booty and their houses a desolation. They shall also build houses but not inhabit them. They shall plant vineyards and not drink the wine thereof. The great day of the Lord is near, it is near, and hasteneth greatly, even the voice of the day of the Lord. The mighty man shall cry there bitterly. That day is a day of wrath, a day of trouble and distress, 
a day of wasteness and desolation, a day of darkness and gloominess, a day of clouds and thick darkness, a day of the trumpet and alarm against the fenced cities and against the high towers. And I will bring distress upon men that they shall walk like blind men because they have sinned against the Lord and their blood shall be poured out as dust and their flesh as dung. Neither their silver nor their gold shall be able to deliver them in the day of the Lord's wrath, but the whole land shall be devoured by fire of his jealousy, for he shall make even a speedy riddance of all them that dwell in the land. Zephaniah 1, chapter 1, 2, 3, 8 to 18. She comments, God cannot forbear much longer. Already his judgments are beginning to fall on some places and soon his signal displeasure will be felt in others places. Where does judgment begin, friends? House of God. There will be a series of events revealing that God is the master of the situation. Will it be one event? A series of events. And friends, I believe that some of those events included what just happened in Paradise, California. The truth will be proclaimed in clear, unmistakable language. As a people, we must prepare the way of the Lord under the overruling guidance of the Holy Spirit. The gospel is to be given in its purity. The stream of living water is to deepen and widen its course. In all fields, nigh and afar off, men will be called from the plow and from the more common commercial business vocations that largely occupy the mind and will be educated in connection with men of experience. As they learn to labor effectively, they will proclaim the truth with power through the most wonderful workings of divine providence. Mountains of difficulties will be removed and cast into the sea. The message that means so much to the dwellers upon the earth will be heard and understood. Men will know what is truth. Onward and still onward the work will advance until the earth shall be, have been warned and then the end shall come. And friends, that's a glorious day, right? But according to the prophet, what has to happen? Destruction, judgment, collapse of buildings. Okay, now let's look at some other evidence here. Okay. The southern part of the San Andreas Fault is locked, loaded, and ready to roll, according to Thomas Jordan, director of the Southern California Earthquake Center. Locked and loaded and ready to roll. Now, here is a map of California. I'm not from California. Those that are from California will be able to recognize this quite well, I'm sure. And um, this red line that goes from north to south, or from south to north, depending on how you're looking at it, is uh, known as the San Andreas Fault. Now, uh, as you near the bottom, you'll see that there's a number of cities uh, along the, the fault represented by little white dots. And um, on the red line, just right in here, is uh, San Bernardino. How far is that from Loma Linda? Are they, are they actually able to be distinguished at this point? Yeah, it's all one and the same, right? So. Let's look here a little bit more closely. Now there's the fault itself. And um, here's Loma Linda Center proper right here. And we're just talking about literally a hop, skip, and a jump away from being right on top of the San Andreas Fault. I don't know, guys, but it just seems like foolishness to me to be building such buildings right on top of a fault. But the story doesn't end right there. Let's move on. So here is another uh, map of California. And there's not just the San Andreas Fault. There is a plethora of other faults. Um, and they're all represented by these red lines. Now what's interesting uh, is that uh, it seems like the greatest uh, area uh, where these uh, faults all come together is uh, right where Loma Linda is. Isn't that interesting? Friends, I'm going to tell you this. I believe that the Lord in mercy, because how many of us right here in this room since the 60s have heard that we're waiting for the big one 
east of LA. Isn't it true? Yes. And I believe that the Lord in mercy has been uh, holding back this earthquake because God's people are there. Amen? Mm -hmm. But you know what? It can only last so long. And I believe, friends, I'm convicted. You don't have to accept this, but I'm convicted that this building project in Lo Loma Linda is an affront to God. And brothers and sisters, I don't believe it's going to stand. And it's what's going to bring it on. I believe it will bring it on. Because friends, when you say this building is earthquake proof, and the prophet says no material be can be used to keep these buildings from being destroyed, I believe that you're tempting fate. In closing, outpost centers are to be established from whence, like Enoch of old, our workers can visit the cities and do faithful service. And, and she says this, she says, after the scene of falling buildings had passed before me, and then I took out a statement there, I referred to the great work that must be done in the cities of our land and of our inability to do this work by establishing institutions in the heart of these cities. Did you hear what she says? You can't do the work if you're going to put these institutions in these cities. They're no good. They're useless. We must learn to labor from outpost centers and to place our dependence. Friends, listen, in closing, for those of you that are in Loma Linda, for those of you that may one day watch this, I don't know if anybody will ever watch it in Loma Linda, but I pray they do. Do not, she says, place our dependence not on buildings or display, but on the power of the Word of God. The Holy Spirit will impress the honest heart. Our dependence is on God. Friends, let's pray. Heavenly Father, Lord, uh, you have laid out these principles for the work, for our publishing houses, for our medical institutions, for our schools. And Lord, I lift up the people in Loma Linda that they would wake up. They would wake up to their situation. The colonizing, the building of large buildings, the not leaving those areas of major population for retirement places in the country where the work could be done effectively and where people could really be healed, both spiritually and physically. We lift up these people, ask that you would wake them up. Lord, shake them awake if it need be. Get them to leave that place before it's too late is our prayer in Jesus' name. Amen. I'm going to pass the offering. But it's the evidence, you know. So thank you very much. Yes. And so right here, this, this has uh, been really great for America in providing food and all kinds of stuff. It's like the bread yeah. Um, except for uh, what happened was over the course of 100 years, people um, to your left. Yes. Uh, yes. Okay, there's two things that are happening. Okay? Two things that are happening. First of all, over a course of a hundred years, so many people came to Southern California that in the 1930s, I know this is hard to believe, Southern California completely ran out of water. There's no water. And, and now let me just say this. There's a little bit of water. But basically there is no water. Okay? All the wells went dry in the 1930s, right? 20s, actually. 20s into the early 30s. Okay? Well, what happened is there's a river that comes up uh, from. Uh, Colorado. Mm -hmm. it, it, it comes from Colorado, mm -hmm. called the Colorado River, and it drains out into the Sea of Cortez. And. The plan was that, you know, they were going to get water from that river, okay? The challenge is that all here east of Loma Linda and down is a mountain range, right? So what they decided to do 
was um, divert a section of the river and make this um, a lake right here. Okay? Is that what it's called? Habasu. 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 Lake Habasu. Mm -hmm. And then what they do is they have these giant pumps with tubes that are like probably the size of this room. And they pump the water up over the mountain. And then gravity, it comes down and it goes across the desert. And it brings all the water to I Southern saw California. That. You saw that? OK. So, so here's the deal. Right? The miles and miles and miles of pipe and canals and all this are highly susceptible to guess what? Earthquakes. Earthquakes. Right? And what will happen is, and I'm saying what will happen, is that when the earthquake damages this thing, instantaneously, 25, 30 million people will have no water. That means if you live in a 14-story high-rise building, no water. You can't flush your toilet, right? Do you know how things quickly deteriorate in hygiene with no water? So if you want to do, get your CD-ROM out, and you want to read a story about how when Ellen White was at Loma Linda, how they drilled the well for the Loma Linda Hospital? That well's dry. And what they're doing is they're getting, they're getting their water from where? That pipe. This is a disaster getting ready to happen. A disaster. There's one more thing that's happening. All in this area, along the Colorado River, are little tributaries and streams that flow into the Colorado River. And all these things right here, these little red dots, represent thousands, not hundreds, but thousands of mine shafts that were sunk during the 1800s and the 1900s, looking for everything from gold, from silver, copper, whatever. Okay, And what had happened is these thousands of mine shafts were abandoned when they hit water. And the water has filled up in the mine shafts. And guess what has created a problem? You see, when they bored into these mines, they exposed heavy metals and salts, right? The heavy metals and salts now have water running into them. And the water is being carried into the river. And every day that goes by, that water is being taken to California and dumped out on the land. And the salinity of the soil is growing and growing and growing. And there are some predictions that by 2040, 2050, the land will not be growable. You understand what I'm saying? Because, yes. So there's like a multitude of, of problems that are coming for California. Yes. Three to four days without water, yeah. And there is no water. I mean, you, you know, and, and so, so remember Ellen White says that uh, there'll come a time when they'll want to leave and they won't be able to? So here's what you have. Mexico is here, right? And the wall is there now. We, we, that will be. We won't be able to get out if you're in Southern California. And then all this area here is all desert. Desert, desert, desert to the east mountains to the east, uh, ocean to the west, and the only way out is I-5 and other roads to the north, with 58, 60 million people all clamoring to get on the same highways with not enough gas, no water, no food, and who knows what else, after massive devastating earthquakes and everything else. And there's such a wide, like I-5 up there, it's, there's such wide areas. Yes. 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 Absolutely. So it's like the perfect scenario for destruction and devastation. And so, uh, you know, again, you know, we need to he heed counsel. Our people need to he heed counsel. Get out of there. Work down there, but don't live down there. We need we need to go down there on missionary trips and 
all this kind of stuff. And uh, you know, Mrs. White says use tents. You don't have to worry about hurricane. I mean, uh, uh, earthquakes too much with tents and stuff. So anyway, <laughs> end of story. Just tell your friends get out. Thank you. What's that?